Hey guys, it's 2 one Maxwell here with another WWE updates video. I'm a little bit under the weather, I will stress that to you guys, but the show must go on. And we've got a little run up after this pay per view, it's three full weeks to Money in the Bank. So I kind of want to get to that stage and get this recorded, and we can have three solid weeks of booking, never a solid pay per view there for Money in the Bank. So, Judgment Day is upon us. It is a SmackDown exclusive pay per view. We do have um, 18 segments here, a couple of good matches here, a couple of championship matches, and uh, three sh pre show matches as well. The video will probably be a little bit shorter because obviously I don't know if my voice can go the full 20 25 minutes as per usual. But we'll kick on, and as always, any storylines we'll explain as we go along. So we go, this is WWE Judgment Day for May 2018. So it's in front of 45,906 in the Carrier Dome in New York. And despite having a very impressive New, uh, New Japan Wrestle Kingdom showing, you get Kenny Omega in the pre show here. But it was a pre show matchup that had decent wrestling but a little heat. And Kenny Omega defeated Noam Dar and Ricochet in 1243. And Kenny Omega defeated Noam Dar by pinfall with Cross Wrath. Noam Dar was a weak link here, struggling to keep up with everyone else's in ring performance. However, it's a matchup that hopefully can um, show that Noam Dar is decent. We can push him in the future. C plus 66 is decent. Noam Dar sustained a uh, costal chondritis. We also had a 49 performance to Ricochet 70 and Kenny Omega 68. I think we'll give Kenny a big push in this, uh, this year. Hopefully, it's been a good position for next year's WrestleMania. Kenny also improves his performance skills. Negatives was just the announced team. So, overall, very happy there with a lot of momentum there for Noam Dar, but a good pre show opener nonetheless. Next up, in a pre show about the head subpar wrestling and low heat, we had Sienna Allison defeat Carmella, Naomi, and Emma in a fatal four way match. 11 53 when Sienna defeated Carmella with the cut throat. Emma carried the match in terms of in ring performance, she was always going to dominate it, but Need to try and push other stars and, and get a bit of a rub off of Emma. So C60 overall here. Emma with an 80. Carmella with 50, uh, 48. Naomi with 52. Sienna with the 56 performance. She also improved in rumble skills. But overall, a good win for Sienna and hopefully another contender for our women's division. Then the final pre show matchup saw the returning Harry Smith. Fresh over his world sport return, defeating Rob Van Dam in 9.44 by pinfall with a running power slam. A C plus 70, very impressive. RVD with a 58, Harry Smith a 71. No skill improvements in this instance, but a win there for Harry Smith is to push the new generation of stars uh, and RVD's contracts up soon, so I think we're just going to let him go as well. On to the actual pay-per-view itself now. And um, we're hyping up our main event, which is a fatal four way for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship as Randy Orton, the Viper, defends it against Sami Zayn, Dean Ambrose, and Big E. An A90 hype video, it's pretty impressive to start there. The segment started to show off well and it got the crowd hotter. And both storyline advance with the Dean vs. Big E storyline gaining a bit of heat. Initially, it was just going to be a rematch between Sami and Randy. But they fought each other for this would be the fourth time they'd fight, so kinda made that a fatal four way matchup. Opening contest of the night was a decent matchup and the feud between Rusev and Nick Aldis continued. Obviously Rusev fresh off that big victory over Brock Lesnar. Aldis shows that he wants to come here and make this his kingdom. But Rusev got the win in fourteen oh nine by submission, B minus seventy two. Just keeping Rusev looking really strong, he'll probably propel back up to main event level after this. Uh, Aldis will probably get into the mid card. Rusev with 74, Aldis with 64. Uh, the storyline continues. Aldis does improve his performance skills. A um, few negatives there, both gentlemen holding back and the announced team. After the matchup, Rusev, you know, decides it was a very good matchup. Fair play to Nick Aldis. He offers to shake the hand of him. Nick Aldis refuses, decides to walk off. This gets a C plus 68 there. As I say, we're more likely just going to end that feud here. Next up, it was a number one contendership match for the Cruiserweight Championship. It was a match that had some decent wrestling, a little heat, 
We had the best of the cruiserweights here, and it was Neville who defeated Manny Andrade, Dragonisto, Trin Barretta, Pentagon Jr., and Trevor Lee in 13.02, when Neville defeated Trevor Lee by pinfall with a shooting star sent on. In terms of in-ring work, Manny Andrade was head and shoulders above the rest. But I see 62. Carl Coventry gave the match a boost. Neville foreshadowed a heel turn during this segment. I feel like um, his heel work's been really good in WWE since he's come back. Um, I never thought we'd ever see a heel Neville, so I want to try it in TW as well. So we're going to go with that. Uh, Dragon Easto with a 55 performance. Manny Andrade, 76. Neville with a 63. Trent Barretto with a 60. Pentagon Jr. with a 65. And Trevor Lee with a 48. Well, no skill improvements in this matchup. A uh, few negatives here, poor momentum, booking decisions, but we need to build more stars uh, and give them opportunities like this. Next up, it was a Cruiserweight Championship match, and it was a decent matchup that saw Will Osprey defeat Chris Sabin in 13 40 by pinfall with a 6 30 splash. Osprey makes the third defense of the Cruiserweight title, C plus 69. Good matchup for Will. Um, Sabin's just one of those veterans feeling he can dethrone the youngster. Uh, Osprey slowed down by his elbow tendonitis, but here the 66, saving with 63. No skill improvements, but again, a good win there for Will Osprey as we continue to build him up. After the matchup, we have uh, just a stare down between challenger and champion, as Will and uh, Osprey and Neville have a post match stare down. So the two British cruiserweights have a stare down. Hevel, uh, Hevel? Neville, anyway. Uh, hence a heel turn, he got the crowd a little bit hotter, and that was a B-74. Next up was a matchup in the Trios division, and it was a decent matchup that saw Luz Luchador, Regina Sargos and Caristico defeat the team of Tyler Breeze, the Brian Kendrick and Tony Nice in 12.34, when Caristico defeated the Brian Kendrick by submission. Los Luchador make the fourth defence of the Trios Championships, the weak link being the Brian Kendrick. But a B-76 is pretty decent, because it's no real storyline here, we're just putting uh, six top cruiserweights together. Caristico with an 84 performance, Argenis with a 76, or Argenis, sorry, with a 76. Arhos with a 76 as well, if we're going by those pronunciations. Tony Nice with a 62. The Brian Kendrick, 49. And Tyler Breeze with a 67. Tony Nice improving his performance skills. Uh, overall, a few negatives in the likes of the announced team and a few negatives for the momentum. But, yeah, good match up there. Uh, certainly doing a lot better than my voice is at the moment. Next up, we had a Fatal 4-Way match for the Championships, the Tag Team Championships. It's that way we've got that many uh, wrestlers. I just want to give them many of them an opportunity uh, on pay-per-view, which is why I have a lot of multi-person matches. And this was about they had some decent wrestling. but didn't have much heat. But it was the American Wolves who defeated the Dynamite Express, the Usos, and TM61 in 14.26. TM61 went out first, then it was Dynamite Express, and finally the Usos. American Wolves, David Richards, and Eddie Edwards make the first defence of the WWE Tag Team Championships. B82. Rich Swan was not suited to his gimmicks, so obviously he's still got that glitch on his gimmick. I'll try and change it again, but I do feel like it's just going to keep coming up glitches with him. Um, if it comes to us, we'll just need to release them, unfortunately. Hopefully that can cure it. Rich one also has an injury, so that slowed him down a little bit. Good chemistry between the Usos, as expected. An 83 performance from Eddie Edwards, 84 for David Richards, 46 for Rich Swan, but you compare that to 64 for Shane Strickland. Both Usos with an 81, Nick Miller with 54, and Shane Thorne with a 58. Shane Thorne improves with Rumble skills in this one. But just another match up there, with a few negatives, quite a few for Rich Swan, some for Nick Miller. But showcasing, you know, that I've got a lot of good tag teams coming through. Um, but there will be a case, we will split the wheels up eventually, give them both single runs. But showing you I've got good depth in this division, and this wasn't including former tag team champions. Of course, the one and only, Odd Villains. Next up we've got Liv Morgan, who only lives once. Cutting a promo, hyping up our matchup with Charlotte, of course, our new uh, SmackDown Women's Champion with a B plus 86 promo there. And it was a triple threat match here, debuting, well, not really debuting, but giving an opportunity to Hikaru Shida, basically showing that, you know, 
she can come here, but she can still put on good matches. She's just trying to really give a flash track her to a good push. But basically, it was um, about that decent wrestling. Didn't have much heat, as Liv Morgan defeated Charlotte and Hikaru Shida in 15.05, when Liv Morgan defeated Charlotte by pinfall after using a foreign object. Liv makes the second defence of her women's uh, SmackDown Women's Championship. Charlotte was head and shoulders ahead of everyone else. Uh, Hikaru Shida was uh, a weak link, but of course, she's going to get over eventually. These kind of matchups will help her. A B78 is pretty good, considering Liv was off her game. A 78 performance from Charlotte, 55 from H Hikaru Shida, and a 67 from Liv Morgan. So again, building these women up, so hopefully one day they can main event a WrestleMania. No skill improvements to speak of here, a few negatives, but nothing nothing horrible, I'm really happy with that rating, is if we build them up, they can get any of that uh, B plus rating into the 80s. Next up, a rating that actually is quite gutted that it's only been as low as that, uh, B minus 75, but it was about that had some great wrestling and decent reaction from the crowd, as we saw the Intercontinental Championship on the line, Zack Sabre Jr. defeats Chris Jericho and AJ Styles in 23-15 when Zack Sabre Jr. defeated Chris Jericho by pinfall with a rolling elbow which makes him for the first time become the Intercontinental Champion. So a good one for him, he goes over Jericho and AJ. Sabre Jr. with an 80 performance, Jericho a 72. AJ Styles with an 83, it continues the storyline. No skill improvements, uh, if we just look at the Road agent notes had to keep AJ Styles looking very, very strong, which I think may be a reason why, you know, it was only a B minus 75. Plus, then you add into the fact 23 minutes, Jericho and Styles both have declining physical ability, so that's probably been a factor as well. That in the booking decisions. And of course, I think a big one as well could be AJ dominating in a lengthy match. But it was only way we we're going to put over Zack Sabre Jr., and I feel like we need the new champion uh, to allow him to reign in the IC division. Uh, and to move AJ Styles back to the top, to the heavyweight division, but at the same time, building a new star in the process. After the matchup, Zack Sabre Jr. celebrates in the ring. We've got, I wouldn't say we've got confetti, we've just got a big celebration for him. And that's an A90, so that's how you put a star over. Hopefully his overness takes a big uh, rise from this. Next up, we've got a promo with Bray Wyatt. He's in a feud with Apollo Crews. Apollo Crews, as we all know, just smiles. Does nothing else. Uh, Bray Wyatt's just like, how can you be continually so happy? You know, I'm gonna just mess with your mind and turn Apollo Cruz into a vicious animal or a vicious creature. And that's a B plus A6. Bray Wyatt came out of this looking excellent. The storyline advances season gained heat. And Bray's getting better at his gimmick. That's good to see as well. Uh, a few negatives there, which is disappointing, but good promo nonetheless. Yeah, a little hype video for it as well, because this has been ongoing for a little bit, and that's a B plus 88. Continuing the feud and gaining heat. Matchup itself, far to deceive, despite great ratings. It was a superb matchup. Apollo Crews got the win over Bray in 2012 with a standing shooting star press. Why this only got a B79, I'm quite disappointed. Bray continuing to get better at the gimmick. An 86 for Apollo Crews, and 91 for Bray. Still in advances, but the match rating doesn't reflect it. It seems to be anything that is on SmackDown just seems to be getting poor ratings and matchups. Negative there. Could it be the lack of hot associated storyline? Should the storyline have maybe been a bit more over? Both men may an inconsistency or a stamina issue in Bray Wyatt and the low heat of the storyline. So I think that could have hampered this quite a good bit. Next up, we've got a promo with Sami Zayn and A93. Sami says Randy Orton took away. His prized possession, the World Heavyweight Championship, and he's going to take it back today because he is the underdog from the underground, and this is his moment. So, again, the bit of heat on the other segment. Well, the matchup hopefully gets a good rating to gain pop importance over the across, across the board because we're on the networks, so we're we'll literally get coverage everywhere. Uh, it wasn't great, it could have been a lot better, but it was about that superb wrestling and great heat. Randy Orton defeats Sami Zayn, Biggie, and Dean Ambrose in 26-34 when Randy Orton defeated Biggie by pinfall after using a foreign object and he makes the second defence of the WWE World Heavyweight title. A B plus 84 there, Sami Zayn was off his game, but despite being off his game produces an 87 performance, a 96 for Dean, a 94 for Randy, 
and 83 for Big E. Both storylines advanced, although the match says it needed better announcing. So could we need a better announced team on this broadcast to hopefully get better ratings in the future? Dean Ambrose improves his flying skills in this instance. Negative there. Inconsistency of Sami Zayn. The announced team it seems like is costing us a good bit. And Big E's low morale. And to end the show, we just have a big brawl between Big E and Dean Ambrose because of their obviously the heat they've got together. Uh, security guards try and break up, but they just keep breaking and um, breaking, brawling all the way to the back to a B plus 84. At the announcing desk, Michael Cole and Booker T were weak, so again, judging by that, plus the segment deserving better commentary and announcing, makes me think we may need to look at addressing our um, announce team. But of course, the problem is there's not many good announcers about uh, in 2018 since GR's retired and. Um, Every other combination we've tried doesn't seem to work, so we might need to build someone up. But positive news there was Dean Ambrose was fantastic. So I think we'll probably either lose momentum here, or our popularity, sorry, or there'll be no specific comments we made about the show. Let's find out. And a B82. Thankfully, we don't lose any um, pop in this one. We don't gain any. The only note we get is we use Noam Dar far too much we're putting them in that opening contest. So, not an amazing pay-per-view, but nonetheless, we're getting over a future generation. We'll probably bring some stars over from Raw in the next few months just to boost up the, the hopefully the ratings of the, of the overall show, just to keep gaining pop. But, overall, nothing to be too disappointed about. Um, I think just to make sure we're improving morale, we'll give Big E and Rusev compliments and good performances. So, Big E was pleased, as was Rusev. Not our finest hour, don't get me wrong, I still feel we've got a long way to improve, but as I say, just something seems to be wrong. When we do a Smackdown show that we just don't seem to be getting the ratings, we're hoping for. So ECW finishes up on 1HD, that's cool, 1HD didn't want to continue with us, that's, that's understandable. Uh, let's look, Judgment Day, positive, most people enjoyed, that's good to see. Um, no Amdar's injury, not going to be taking time off. He'll be working through that. We'll check how long he'll be working through that injury for as we're into June now. Mark Haskins is going to be signing with us on a written deal. I'm going to make him a heel because we need more people in the cruiserweight division. But guy was over. Guy was working well. So no reason not to bring him in. Let's have a look here. We finished first out of two in the USA. First out of two in Canada. First out of two in Mexico. And first out of three in Japan. So going well there. All Japan have put a contract in for Naito. Um, probably just going to let him go, I think. Won't sign a written deal with us. Um, although it is a touring contract with uh, All Japan, so we might actually get to keep him. But as I say, we can improve though, because of he's got that loyalty to New Japan, we can improve that, although I should probably push him more with his age. All Japan also made a, a deal for Fergal Devitt. We still can't touch him because he's toxic and he still won't speak to us. But again, that's his fault for what he's done. ECW, uh, as I say, that's ended, we know that. We'll have to look at sorting out deals for these two shows, I'll do that in the future. Um, no I'm Dar, we'll check. Both Perrette and Trevor Lee need some victories, that's fair enough, they have been enhancement talent recently. 9k on our drug testing. And 41.43 TV ratings, so a lot of people tuned into the network uh, to watch Judgment Day. But overall, uh, a lot of things we need to do this. So Eve Torres is going to be leaving. That's confirmed. Got a few issues there. Want to check money in the bank tournament. So we've got uh, one money in the bank at the moment. I might make a second money in the bank briefcase. One for Raw, one for SmackDown. Still to decide that. I might just make it um, six people free from each brand competing. And the women's money in the bank uh, is also going to happen this month as well. But we're looking good. Prestige 98, momentum 9, uh, 89 at the international. No real rush to get back up to global just as yet. I'm just going to make it a slow progress. Just to ensure we're getting stars over. I think a focus at the moment is maybe looking to push over the popularity and importance that we have at the moment in the UK, in Europe, and then Australia and New Zealand as well. I think everywhere else we're pretty good across the board at the moment. We want to get the rest of the 70s. Well, I think I can add this moment in time financially, doing very well. Um, a good £13 million profit. Not as good as the last couple of months, but let's say we just did the one show on pay per view. Um, the rest on the network. 
But as you can see there, uh, in terms of pay-per-view uh, revenue, probably rivaling what we had at the tail end of, of last year. So something we'll seek to improve, but as I say, a big pay-per-view and money in the bank. And hopefully we can just keep building new stars as we enter, as I say, run to SummerSlam and then Survivor Series. So that's going to be it for this episode, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you thought of the pay-per-view. Do you feel the right people won? Is there any day on uh, SmackDown you'd like to see get a push in the future? Is there anyone you'd like to see move to Raw? It might benefit there. Let me know if any potential future you'd like to see on the SmackDown brand going forward. And of course, is there anyone you'd like to see signed? Let me know as well. But as always, guys, thanks for watching. It's deeply appreciated. Any likes, subscriptions, shares, all that jazz are all deeply appreciated. Any feedback as well, always deeply appreciated uh, how we can improve the series. And as always, if you want to get involved in TW, the game's available on Great Dog Software uh, website. A lot of advice, a lot of help, a lot of mods on the forums there, and as well as the Fantasy Booker subreddit, which is just a great place with a lot of discussion there. A lot of other guys' series, you can check out everything if it's modern day, people with custom ones, people with ones from the, the, the past. You get Meldy putting up his um, database up there as well, and just a lot of discussion and a few comedy screenshots on there as well. So don't be afraid to check that out, guys. And until next time, this is Twitter One Maxwell signing off. See you next time when I might actually have a voice. See you later on. Bye bye.